Welcome to the first hey. of our Fire Emblem podcast style episodes. Yeah, 105. Hope you guys enjoy this format. Uh, we are talking over previously recorded game footage. If something seems different, that's yes. what it is. So let us know what you think about that. Old video, new audio. Have fun. You think we're going to beat all these games? Nope. Backlog Boys. No, probably not. Look at this. Hey, welcome back to Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. Yes, this is the final leg of a long marathon esque real marathon yeah. race, a whole that we have taken across year two, almost a year here. This has been the only game I've played. Y yes, for my, this my has slot. been the entirety of Monday Vonday for as long as Monday Vonday has existed. It has been Fire Emblem Sacred yep. Stones, and there have been many moments where I've been practicing for this series and thinking to myself, "Wow, I really like this game," but I am I'm. I'm I'm getting ready for it to, to to move on to a new game. Yeah. <laughs> have there also been moments where you're like, wow, I hate this game and I want this to be over? Um, there have been moments of, of tedium. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that is always like a circadian rhythm for me when I play a Japanese game where it's like there's like this exciting phase at the beginning where you're like wow this is like almost like overwhelming mm -hmm. and then there's this middle phase where you're in like a rhythm with the game and it's really exciting and then towards the end you're like ah oh, and there's like this long grind and there's this tedium and there's repetitive mm -hmm. things and by the end you're like ready for it to be over yeah but like if but it's still like somewhat bittersweet yeah i think that's why i just take some time away from some games but and then kind of yes return to them Definitely a smart exercise if you're smart about it. Yeah, don't wait. sometimes if you take too long away from the game, you just shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah, don't wait too long. And you're really screwed, yeah. But wait long enough to get your, your energy back. Yeah. Your groove. But like, yeah, this like is... Like Stella. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is the chapter before the final battle. Yes, the penultimate chapter. The last real chapter, I, I suppose. Yep. Uh, so buckle up. Strap it in. We... Oh, we, so there's a guy. Hope your couches have seatbelts. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and this, this guy, as I remember from before, this is Murr's father, right? Yep. I don't know so, if that's been revealed yet. Maybe that's a spoiler, but... So he was alive when the original war of the... Uh, what do they call him? The I don't demon know. god, the... The war of the demon king? The demon king. There we go. Yeah, the the original war of the demon king, from another which game. is which is like eight hundred years okay. ago. So this guy he old. was there. Yeah, Methuselah. Yeah. So, uh, Mira is Mira is also Methuselah, very old, but younger than him. So, did you know that Methuselah is the the last half of Methuselah is spelled like Saleh? Really? Like yeah, S A L E H. Methuselah. The s oh it's yeah, Methuselah. That's how it's spelled. I just realized that. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Mr. Curly-Headed yeah. Bobble Dude. Got Shrekt. Shrekt. <laughs> R-E-K-T Shrekt. I yep. love it. That's yeah, that awesome. Was, that, was, that was wild. But yeah, the end of this game is imminent. Mm -hmm. And you know what else is imminent? Saying that. What's that? The other imminent thing looming on the horizon is VGMCon. Oh, that's right coming up this weekend um yep this uh, this approaching weekend yes five days five days away yep uh it's uh it's pretty big deal yeah for us it's something we've been working on for like 16 months mm -hmm. and a lot of time and effort has gone into it mm -hmm. and it's gonna be i think it's gonna be hopefully a really good payout payoff it looks like it, it, on on paper, it looks amazing with like the the lineup that we have. Yeah, it's the schedule is just great, incredible. Some great people. The acts that and were, the guests that we were able to get are just like we were like so humbled that we were able to put together. And it's, and it seems like a the almost, programming. Um, it felt like every year we were we were still getting more and more kind of big name people, but now it's like this. This seems like a a bigger leap. Yeah, it does than, seem than like a little bit of a leap years. as far as who we've got um, with with people from like out of state and um, people yes. that that we uh, know and listen to 
um, as in, in, in terms of composers and, and musicians. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Very excited. Um, and then there was a funny story that we had told in the previous attempt of this session <laughs> that we said was worth retelling. And uh, it involves it involves a lot of the hard work and promotion that we've done for VGM Con. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so one of the things that we have at the convention, or will have, I should say, and have had before, is a, a strings clinic where, like, kids who play stringed instruments... Yeah, violin, viola, cello, bass. Yeah, come in, and they get to... You know, a lot of them are meeting each other for the first time, and then we have a clinician who's a string player who, like, teaches them some arrangements of video game music that's specifically arranged for their ensemble, their group of musicians. Mm -hmm. And then they spend a couple hours learning the music and rehearsing it, and then they actually go and perform it for, like, the attendees as, mm -hmm. like, a concert, which is super cool. And so as part of that, uh, Tom, who runs the convention, along with myself... Uh, of of uh, Child of Light fam. Yes, Tom from Child of Light. Uh, we we were charged with going out to some schools and meeting with these kids and actually trying to get them to sign up for this thing and tell them about it, uh, which was terrifying for us. <laughs> uh, you know, we're we're not really involved directly in the strings clinic. Like, n neither one of us are the person who wrote the arrangements. Neither one of us are the person who is leading the clinic. And, or, and, and or even plays a stringed instrument. And, and we don't play <laughs> stringed instrument. I mean, we play guitar, but we don't play stringed instrument like is going to be in the clinic. So, and we're not teachers. We're, yep. we're, we're not very, we both consider ourselves inferior at working with younger people yep. and children. Uh, so we were pretty terrified. We were going to have to go to this high school at like eight o'clock in the morning and get up in front of these kids that we don't know anything about and try to tell them about VGM con. Uh, and we, we had to go to three classes, and the very first one we went to, we just bombed. It was so bad. They must have been like freshmen because they looked like yes. babies. So I, I, have, I have some insider info because I went. This is my high school. This is the high school that Vaughn went to, actually. Yes, that's right. Uh, this is Cooper. Uh, yeah, if you're in the area, I guess you might know that. Um, um, so it's in the way it, the way it's kind of divided up is there's there's the freshman orchestra. Mm -hmm. Who, so it's all of grade nine, and then there's two for ten through twelve. There's two separate orchestras. One that the like upper um, and lower. Yeah. So one you audition into, and one you don't have to audition into. I see. Um. So once you're in tenth grade, you could be in either, and so then that orchestra has you know the full range of ages. Yeah. Um. Up to senior, but yeah. yeah there's also the freshman orchestra. Who it's all freshmen, and that. Yeah. Because like it's we, a bit of an age difference to you. They're probably like. Who the heck's this guy? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, f I, f I didn't necessarily feel old, but they looked younger than I thought they would, mm -hmm. you know? And, like, we go in there. There's a substitute teacher who's, like, super happy to see us and expects us to take up, like, 25, 30 minutes of the time because she's got nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. she's She doesn't know anything about music. Well, and it, yeah, it's not even... She's, if, not, she's not, like, a you know, a competent sub. She's there like showing them like a video, Yeah. you know? So she's happy to have us in there. She's introduces us as like guest speakers <laughs> and we get in there and they turn the lights on and there's probably like 15, 20 kids in the room. Doctors Austin and, and Thomas will have the floor now. Right. Right. And they're all spread out and they're in these like bleacher style orchestra choir seats, yeah. like looking down at us at the front of the room. And we're both nervous it's early and we're both like sleepy. We don't get up early in the morning, either of us, because we work, you know, nights. And uh, the kids are just like wide eyed and silent. Mm -hmm. Like we're trying to like look around the room and kind of trying to make eye contact with them to get some chemistry going. And we open up with who likes video games. <laughs> <laughs> and, should and be a slam dunk. And it should be a slam dunk, right? And we just get crickets. <laughs> just straight crickets. Nothing. None of these kids say anything. Not a peep. And all I can muster is to be like, I think somebody's holding out. You know, just like nervous response. And so then we just proceeded to like tell people about the convention anyways and try to look around and see if some people were interested. And it did look like some people were maybe like nerdy kids that were afraid to speak up that looked like they were maybe interested, but trying not to show that they were interested. Yeah. But every time we asked a question, nobody said anything. Like we seriously did not get a single word out of these kids. 
Um, and then, uh, they, uh, they just kind of looked at us, and after what felt like only, like, five minutes, we were just like, okay, well, we've got some flyers here, they have a special promo code on the back, you know, if you want to sign up, uh, you know, talk to your parents, uh, you know, ask your parents before you log on to the <laughs> World Wide Web kind of thing, and, uh, and then we just kind of walked out of there. And we just were looking at each other walking out of this place and we were like, oh my God, how are we going to come back here twice more. in the afternoon and do this two more times? This isn't worth it. And Tom drove me back to my house and I'm just thinking about it for like the next two hours. Like, can I really do that again? Can you really do that two more times? That was awful. Morale is just gone. Yeah. And we finally decided like, yes, we said we were going to do this. We have to do this. They're expecting us. You know, this. Th- we said we we're going to do this. Let's do it. And we show up for the afternoon class. It's in the same room, but it's different kids and a different substitute teacher. And it was like night and day. These kids were, they looked a little bit older, but not significantly older. And which I guess, you know, from my perspective, they aren't significantly older, but uh, from a high school perspective, they might have been. And we. And they've also, the other thing I was thinking of is that they, so these freshman orchestra people, they haven't. This is their first year together. Right. They don't, they don't really know each other. Okay. These other two orchestras. Probably been together been, longer. Yeah, they were in a freshman orchestra together. If they're in, if they're seniors in one of the upper orchestras, they've been in that orchestra for at least right. a year or two and they know everyone else. So yeah. like, they're going to come out of their, they're going to come out of their shell a little more. You know? Right. They're going to be, they, they all know they're nerds at that point. Right. <laughs> if they're still in orchestra and they're still, yeah, they're still doing it and they, they're comfortable with each other there. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to speak up. But man, it was it was awesome when we went into the second class because it was like slam dunks all over the place. Mm-hmm. You know, people were like leaning Slip forward, up here. leaning forward when we said certain things. And like eyebrows were going up, and like people, like you'd hear people like whoa, you know, yeah. <laughs> and like people were getting into it and asking us questions. And there was a kid that came up to us after the end of the presentation because it was at the end of the class. We were the last thing in their class. Oh, okay, and this That's one probably kid, better. It was better. Yeah. And this kid came up to us and like shook our both of our hands and said thank you and like looked us in the eye. <laughs> and he was like, like t- proud of you. And he, he was yeah, and he was probably like fourteen or fifteen, but he was like taller than us. He was like bigger than us. He was a big <laughs> kid, but he was clearly very young. And it was just really funny to see the different spectrum of reactions. And we were mm-hmm. like, okay, now it was worth it. And then we went next door for the th- for the third class, and this one was by far the best <laughs> because we go into that room. It's another substitute teacher, a third different substitute teacher, all replacing one teacher, all replacing gone, one the, teacher, the one orchestra teacher. Yeah, and uh, we get into this class, and the class was like m- almost all girls, um, which was a little bit uncomfortable for me that was very much my high school orchestra uh, experience but the cool thing was is that they were all string players so we were speaking directly to their interests oh it wasn't like brass it was yeah it wasn't a full wins. orchestra it was just oh. strings so we were really speaking their language um and th- at one point in the presentation you know they were already interested but then we were on the website showing them the VGM con website and how they could like sign up and stuff. And we went to the strings clinic page to show a picture of last year's strings clinic. And then a picture of Kenny, uh, from bards of the goddesses, who is the strings clinician. And when we scrolled and they could see his picture, we're like, and this is Kenny and he's our clinician. (laughs) So there's this one black kid in the, in the, (laughs) this black guy in this class who was wearing a tiger print pajama onesie. Wow. Like confidently, and and but, he, but weren't you saying that like he was it one of, like maybe the whole class was kind of everybody was kind of in their jammies, or, but nobody was wearing anything on that level, <laughs> and he was so <laughs> confident. He was like slouching in his chair. He was all hanging out. He was with his friends, with his posse, and like he was definitely like hanging out with the girls, but he was not like the gay friend, mm-hmm. you know. And he was probably only one of like three or four guys that was in there. And he was like right in the center of the room. And when we scrolled up this picture of Kenny, he goes, oh, that's homeboy. (laughs) And this, the warmth that came off of this kid, like he legitimately recognized Kenny. And then everybody, (laughs) and then everybody else in the room kind of rippled and they were kind of like, oh yeah, we've seen, yeah, we know him. That's Kenny. That's Mr. Schuster, whatever. And we, (laughs) and then Tom and I realized, oh, like Kenny's a strings teacher. 
and these are string kids. And he subs here, yeah. And he subs here, so yeah. This is also Kenny's high school. They've seen him before. Kenny and I went to high school together. Yes, so, so he's like an alumni Not as a well. surprise that he, he would substitute yeah. in that district. But we didn't think about that. Yep. We didn't we didn't consider the fact that they would know him. And, <laughs> That's so funny. And it was so funny, like, how excited this kid was that he, that he knew him, and he called him homeboy. And so that, so that third class was just a slam dunk. We just, like... <laughs> Like by the, it was so funny. Like the first class, oh, we, were, we were like, "This is like prison. This is torture." Mm-hmm. And then by the end of the third class, it was like, "We are professionals. We could do this for a job." <laughs> <laughs> like these kids are eating out of our hands. Yeah, and we were getting, like you're not even trying. And like, we were getting just, yeah, just, yeah, it, yeah. We were just <laughs> slam dunks all over the place. So, but all in all, it was a worthwhile experience. And you should go to VGM Con. You should absolutely. If you're listening to this before VGM Con has happened, if you're listening to this episode fresh so off much the boat. Cool stuff. Get yourself down to VGMCon because it's going to be fantastic. I don't yeah. care how far away you are. Get down there, yeah. or, or up, depending on. More than likely up. Yeah, I think if you took well, like a, a heat map Vaughan, of world population. Technically, Vaughn up is away from the planet. <laughs> if you're looking at a Mer- <coughs> Mercator projected map, and you're in a southern state, then yes, up. But actually, Austin, if you took a heat map projection of the entire world population the majority of the people would be below on a mercator map due to the the heavy population centered around mediterranean altitudes <laughs> lot of, yeah the latitudes, equator lot of, lot of latitudes latitudes yeah. yeah yeah uh but yes please come to vgm it's you'll you'll see us you'll see the boys will be the, there the fabled kenny we thought vaughn wasn't going to be there yeah it's actually That's, another interesting thing about this session is we thought it was going to be our last session. Yes. Because Vaughn was supposed to go away for a military thing. Yes. And miss VGM Con. Yeah. And be gone for On like short a month. Too. Yeah, super short notice. Um, a whirlwind of events. So, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a fun... Ex- no, it wasn't. It wasn't a fun experience. It was like... No, um, it was not fun at all. Essentially, I... You kind of went through like a miniature hell. Yeah, there was... So, I, I, re- I changed jobs in the army. Um, I was a mechanic, and it was a bad mechanic for by by the army standards, um, <laughs> and by your own and by my own your admission own accord, your own um, standard, yeah. So, and I didn't enjoy it, and I loved the the people. Um, I loved my compatriots, but I did not like the work you were doing, the work I was doing, and we had a a lot of problems with the leadership in that in this unit. So myself and like, no joke, ten other mechanics, all between when we would have been between the ages of eighteen and twenty when we all joined. Okay. And we were all those ages at the same time, and we all joined within like two months of each other to the same unit. So there's almost like this whole class of people that joined this unit. Yeah. And this in the same job. Yeah. And for the same period, we were you know six year contracts for all of us so right so you should have been a pretty tight-knit close yes group. and we very much were but out of all of those people no one stayed at the unit at the end of their contract no one re-signed into that job class i am one of two out of those 10 who who is still in the army even oh wow so yeah obviously it hasn't been a positive experience it was a positive. It was a positive experience. I think no. I think there's a lot of good to be said for it. But it was not somewhere any of us wanted to stay. Right. Obviously, people we, weren't enjoying it. No. They saw it as a stepping stone whatsoever. and something to get through. Um, and so that that's its own story. But so I changed job classes. Um, so I'm now like Garcia did. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm a on class uh, a civil affairs specialist, which is very different. Um, but I have to go to a school for that. It's a, you know, a month long academy, um, where you learn about that, which is a, com- you know, completely different ball game from what I know about the army so far. Right. And it's, you know, you need a security clearance. It's the, the school itself is in super high demand. So I find out maybe two months ago that there's like no slots for the whole fiscal year. Everything's gone. Sweet. Um, so it's like, oh, wow. I'm going to be waiting a while before I can go. Um, and then I find out what this would have been maybe a month ago? Three weeks? Not even, maybe. 
Yeah, about th- probably three weeks, I guess. Um, so there's a slot. A slot had just opened up, and that slot ran from February 26th to March 26th. And February 26th, at this point, is like two days away from when we're recording. Yeah, it's Actually, the, the date, date of this it's episode. The date this episode airs. Yeah. I was gonna be gone if I took this slot. Right. And the trouble was, if I didn't take it. Who knows how long I'd be waiting? Who knows yeah, like, what next, like over next a fiscal year, year you said was yeah. possible? Who knows what next fiscal year will look like? And who and if I don't get to this school, I'm just gonna kinda of be in limbo for quite a while before I can do anything or Yeah. Before get, you can class up. Get promoted. Basically <laughs> yeah. basically this little school program is like your class up item and you're just chilling at level twenty. Yeah. Wasting experience. <laughs> yes. And you can't class up very much, yeah. And, and you're burning up all your weapons, right? You're going through the uses. You're not getting. Ex- yeah, you're just a, you're just a sponge. Yeah, it's doing nothing. Yep. You're already soaked. Um, <laughs> soaked. So I was like, okay, you know what? I talked to a couple professors. They were cool with me taking those two classes, and I was going to drop the rest mm-hmm. um, because it was going to be way too much to be gone for a whole month missing all this stuff and have to scramble at the end of the semester so i was like okay right. these are the two classes i need the most talk to those professors they were like we'll do whatever we need to to help you make this possible yeah uh, and i was like that's Which is great that's great that's awesome so i had all this stuff lined up and you know pulled the trigger i was like yep i'm going uh yeah like it was official yeah it was like vaughn's gone he's going and then all of a sudden no, you're not. You're going in April. Um, yeah, just turned on a dime. So, but after you had already set up everything to take yeah, a break, like classes were already withdrawn. Um, yeah, I told everyone I was not going to VGM well, and, your, and your work too. I told my work. Yeah. So work, school, and convention planning. Yeah. Were all just like removed from the picture. <laughs> but then I found out I'm not going yet. I'm going in April. Yeah. So. That was easy in the case of work, where I could just be like, okay, well, this this is not what I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be gone yeah. later. JK. That's actually easier. Yeah. <laughs> so that worked out okay. And But then for school, it's like you'd already, like already canceled done all that. that stuff. But in one way, it might be better because for these classes, it sounds like I'm going to take the finals after I'm back. So I, I, won't, oh, okay. I won't have to be taking it early. Sure. Or, and I, and I won't be missing as much. I'll actually be missing less class in, in class time. Oh, okay. But, and then my other job is offering me like some extra hours um, during the daytime to make up for like the class time I don't have anymore. Yeah. So there's there's some silver linings, but like you know I had to be like okay well that's for the most crazy. part how do I? It's a big shit show though. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was a it was a mess getting. It was a mess like saying committing to a bunch of things and then saying oh i can't do those anymore yeah and then saying oh wait i guess i can do those even though i already pulled pulled back on everything right and it's yeah so you weren't able to just like jump back into right. some of the stuff that you were involved in which really sucked so like for in in the case of vgm con that was particularly difficult right because I, I essentially said i i can't do anything yeah anymore yeah. Um, and so we had to like immediately fill that void. Yeah. And spread that work out between ourselves. And then at the 11th hour again, I was like, <laughs> Oh, JK, I'm back. Hey, I'm back. When it's like too late for you to get me <laughs> back into that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of crazy. But nonetheless, you should go to VGM. Yes, you should. Because I will also be there. <laughs> yes. The boys will Thank be present. And you should be there too. In full effect. Looks like we're this making is, some slow progress this here. This is so weird watching you play this game, but you're not playing it right now. Yeah. Like, watching you play like, this game, having already watched you play it once. <laughs> like, I watched you actually play this game. You did. For this. And now I'm just watching you having played it. This is also weird for me from, like, an editing standpoint. Because, like, obviously I I rewatch everything that we record at least once mm-hmm. when I make the episodes but this is not something that you've ever done ever no i mean obviously you've watched well, and had to, you've watched episodes but and well, also in fire Lum's case like it's even more so different because my mind is not half clogged with 
yeah, like Fire Emblem what, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what? Yeah, Vaughn. Well, what weapon it's usually do I use? very difficult like, for Vaughn to talk during this game because yeah. well, because I'm constantly making like quick mathematic calculations. Like, oh, can this? Does this have danger of killing? Will this do enough damage? Who? Right. Who? Do I need which weapon? Do I need to use? Yeah. All these micro decisions, just over and over again. Yeah, but you're <laughs> really slow down. You're free from that. I am for it's, the for the very, next four episodes. It's very liberating until we beat the game. You're free from that. Um, so you recently cataloged your games. I did. What made you want to do that? Um, I don't know. I. I think there was maybe like we well, said you wanted to do it for a while. Yeah, I think there was always kind of an mind. itch there for me to for that where I wanted to to like make a like a spreadsheet of my game collection. I was actually just working on it some more last night. I uh, it's a, it's in Google Sheets, and if anyone out there has never used, excuse me, that was a burp. That was yeah. Wow, I didn't realize what that <laughs> a was. Rumbling. Yeah. Um, if you've never used Google Sheets before, I strongly recommend it. It's so much fun to just like mess around in. It's almost like like a, like a mini programming language. Kind of cool how you can like make stuff like, you know, automatically calculate based oh, on yeah. what you put in other cells over in other cells. Like I, I use like it for ex, my It's like Excel Lite. And right. You can have it anywhere. Yeah. On your phone. Right. You can access it's, it. It's very accessible. Uh, it's pretty cool. I use it for all my expenses. So I have like a spreadsheet for all my expenses and I have these different like columns for the different like categories of things like food and, you know, things that are superfluous that I want and, you know, like expenses that are unavoidable, things like that, bills. And I, and then, you know, it like manually adds it all up. And then, like, in my far right column, I can see, like, the total for each category and then, like, how much money I have available minus whatever I put in for my income. You know, it's really great. Look but, that fucking axe. Dude, it's insane. <laughs> Freaking half of a table sharpened on one side <laughs> with a pole through it. I mean, those were two big axes, but Gilliam's... He's out of control. The fact that he has to retract it with a chain. Yeah. Like, it digs so far in. It's 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 out of control. Hello. Uh, but yeah, I made a I made a spreadsheet of all of my games, and I like ordered them by the console, and then each one has like the developer the name. Fucking crits, dude! Out of out of out of control. Name me. She's on a horse, and she's swinging. She's coming out swinging. <laughs> oh, name me. Uh, she's been the she's been the, the the crit queen. But yeah, why did why did you ask me about my? My spreadsheet. Well, it made me think of... So I actually... Only to interrupt me. I actually just got a... So rudely. <laughs> I just got a new bookshelf. Oh. Um, so from when I moved from Roseville back to my parents, mm -hmm. um, I still... I only had one bookshelf there. And that bookshelf is now being used for other things. So that... It's not just for me, but my parents as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really have anywhere for my books, and so I just have this this huge box, like the the box that my Casio keyboard came in. That's you know a full eighty eight key keyboard, just a huge yep. box, yep. gigantic and long, long rectangular right prism. Yeah, and I just have it filled with books, and it's the heaviest box on the freaking planet. And like you've you, never had a bookshelf. No, I don't have one now. Oh, okay. Since moving back from Roseville. Oh, I see. I had I had a bookshelf there that had that could take most of it, but now I'm sharing that essentially with my parents. I see. Um, because we needed somewhere, you know, to put not just my books, but their books, my mom's old textbooks, like, like games and oh, movies I see. and stuff. I see. It's a, it's uh, it's a shared space. Yeah. Got and it. you know, I I offered it up as that, but the crits. <laughs> Dude, it's crit city, dude. We yeah, we said it in, in the previous this squad episode, we, or the previous this tw version this of 20. this episode. We were calling the calling them the crit crew. Yeah, the crit crew, like not a pit crew, but a crit crew. <laughs> yeah, the car pulls up, or an enemy pulls up, and they're just, just yeah, freaking slicing. Yeah, they it come up out in eleven quick. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> crit. Oh man. Um, but so this box in this box. This Casio keyboard box couldn't even fit all of my books. Okay. I still have a bunch of books, like, in other various smaller boxes, like, throughout the house, and it's driving everyone mad, and mostly me. Just little, like, 
pockets of books hidden yeah. everywhere because there, there's just so many. So, oh, what is, and what, what is this? And they lift up a shirt and there's just a pile of books. <laughs> Damn it, Vaughn! <laughs> like you're pooping in the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And so it is kind of like that. They're everywhere. Yeah. Um, and like all the series are split up between all these boxes. So I'm oh, like, so it's not organized at all. No, it's just madness. Oh, it and so really stressful. Just today, this bookshelf arrived. Mm-hmm. Brand new bookshelf. It's like 76 inches tall. It's okay. great. It's huge. And I'm putting it in my room. And it's like, um, it's also very cool because there's no assembly required. Mm-hmm. I pulled it out of the box and it's it's like this. And it just kind of, and like the the kind of shelves are, are kind of like a teepee. They're shoved up together. And then you just unfold it and huh. shelf. The whole Weird. thing. It just slides open like that. It's all metal. It's very sleek looking. None of it's, you know, damaged wood from, or like crappy. Uh, yeah. MDF. MDF board from, that got scratched in transit. Yeah. You know? So it's, so far I'm very pleased with it. But, so I started before coming over here in in the snow. I started putting my books away. And I was like, wow, this feels fucking great to get rid of all this stuff yeah and put it where it should be yeah it all oh, on display that's the best feeling like, in the world is having like a, very much like this yeah like it's you, you have something that you know you want a better place for I pointed it and to you, austin's video games and you finally have somewhere where it like belongs yeah and so you have having done this project of of cataloging them made me want to like get your books in order we'll get my books in order but also there's like books that I've forgotten that I've read that I don't own and I have like a thing for wanting to own them because I want to I don't know if I'll come back to them or oh so you want to make a thing of like all the books that you've read all the books I've read which ones I own which ones I don't what, maybe when I read them or how many times there's some books I've read more than once um you're and you're, like putting putting genres on them yeah like oh what do I read of this genre what can I read more of to kind of diversify it yeah that would be cool a you know, backlog maybe how many pages books. how long it takes sure to get you know things i don't know that would be cool to know and just to have organized yeah um, that would be cool i have gotten really into the spreadsheeting like everything is color coded mm-hmm. so like the left column is like the console that everything is from and last night i just put in like images so you can actually mm. see like the emblem that's actually of, the, of <laughs> yeah of the console um you know and then the, and then there's the game title and and then I have like a notes column on the far right that says like anything from like if I haven't 100 percented the game yet, like what's what's still remaining or like I'll just put in like who I got the game from or just any kind of like neat little anecdotal thing that I'll probably forget later on. That'll be cool to come back to if you gotten around to putting in a note for Eternal Ring. I don't know what it says for Eternal Ring. It probably says something like just play, put, played put, back in the day, emoji. Re, rebought. Well, and there is also a color code for any game that was played on Backlog Boys. Oh, so all the, if you go through the collection, you can see which like ones a special have been little sticker played on the show. Yeah, and then I have a column also for the percentage of completion for each game. Oh, and it would also be nice because you could put like <laughs> what games haven't you beaten? Right. Or what books haven't I finished? Well, yeah, that's that's the main reason why um, I did it. What series have I started and not finished? You know, what books do I want to I can, finish those? I can scroll down the right side of my, my spreadsheet and see all the games that I've never played. And then I can see the ones that I've started and not finished. And then ones that I've maybe beaten, but there's still more for like 100%. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's really nice to have that. And it's just nice to know like how many I have and know that everything is in there and that I haven't like forgotten some like digital title that's hanging out somewhere yeah. or something that's part of a compilation. Cause I, I went through and I cattle like anything that was in a compilation or digital. I also included as like an individual title mm. instead of just putting like the name of the compilation. I put every single title that's in the compilation as its own individual, like the Kirby. Yeah. So like one. Kirby's dream collection on the Wii it has like Game Boy games, Super Nintendo games, original Nintendo games, and an N64 game. Mm-hmm. And I put each one of those respective games in their console section. So it's like I have that game, and I don't want myself to forget that I have that game. You know? Yeah. By just putting that I have Kirby's Dream Collection. It's also like a couple of 
at least two books that I know I'm s missing that I are part of a series. Oh, and like the, that you've never had or that you lost? I don't know what happened to them. They're oh, just, okay. <laughs> they're just gone. Do you um, still have my copy of Redwall? I do, yeah. Okay. Yes. That's good. <laughs> Glad to know it's safe. It hasn't been read yet, unfortunately. That's okay. You've been a little busy. And I also have this bad habit of reading like five books at the same time. Oh, I can never do that. I only read one book at a time. Well, they're thankfully all separate categories. Like there's, you know, I'm reading like Guns, Germs, and Steel, which is like hard nonfiction. Uh-huh. Just, you know, like very sciencey. And then the other nonfiction is about Rwanda, but that's very narrative based. Like he's yeah, telling a story. Yeah, you've talked about that book before too. So, you know, I don't really get those two confused, but then I'm reading the Expanse series, which is completely different. So they're all at least very different. And then like, okay. a, like a chess book of a guy, talk, you know, writing about his 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 most famous games or like his favorite games that he's played huh. like a, a very known very well a world champion uh, wow. chess player because i've been getting into that so at least they don't all like blend together yeah it wouldn't but, be easy to get them confused yeah but i mean and that but then like i'll go to work and i have like five options to choose from and i don't always pick the same one because i'll always be in a different mood and then yeah well, that's, that's good. It makes a lot more sense, given that you have the time to read that you do. Oh, w yeah, work makes it very accessible. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's like I pretty much exclusively only read in a situation where I, like, consciously decide to oh, go I, to I bed early I'll, Yeah, and, and sit in my bed and bed. read before I go to sleep. Like, that's pretty much exclusively the only reading that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the night, so I'll get in bed early and read. Mm -hmm. I actually just started a new book. What's up? Um, it's a book. Holy fucking foot cramp. Oh, my God. You got a Charlie horse? Yeah. It's just move it around. Flex Oof. it. It helps it. The worst thing you can do when you have a Charlie horse, folks, is sit still or not move the, the muscle that's Oof. cramping up. Because in my experience, if you just let it sit there, it just gets worse and worse and worse. But Crits. If you, but if you move it. Uh, the book I'm reading is is, bye -bye. is written by the same author as the Redwall series, but it's one of the few books he's written that's unrelated to the Redwall series. Oh, I feel like I might have talked about this. I think you might have another crit. But I don't I don't know if it was fuck out of here. I don't know if it was talked doing? about in this old session that we're recording over. I don't remember either. I don't remember. You did tell me about this. It's uh, it's called Castaways of the Flying Dutch. Oh, it's it's um, it's Castaways of the Flying Dutch. Yeah, we talked about this in Newt One. Was it in Newt One? Yep. Okay, yeah. Because it's historical fiction. Yeah, it is yes. historical fiction That's because right. the Flying Dutchman really cool. is like a famous myth. Um, yeah, and the boy is mute. And I just got to the part of the book where he has actually gotten shipwrecked off of the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the crew of the Flying Dutchman has been like swallowed at sea. Yeah. Uh, and they actually get judged by like a, like a deity. Like a deity comes down and like judges the captain of the... Of the Flying Dutchman, and everyone just gets like wrecked. But the the boy and the dog <laughs> like gets, that get spared because they were like innocent. Mm -hmm. But then they're like floating at sea, and supposedly they're gonna wash up on shore like three hundred years in the future. It's pretty. That's a very cool premise. Yeah. So I'm excited to see how it turns out. I'm only like eight chapters in, and it goes by pretty quick. But yeah, Brian Jakes, he knows how to he knows how to write like a well paced fiction like. You can, his, his writing is such like a fast read like it's 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 not it, I, well I, I remember not, reading some of the red wall series it's not when I was like young, jk rowling it, where it's like that feeling feels kind of like dumbed down and you like fill in the blanks like it's very descriptive language it's just not like overly verbose it's like it's like descriptive and succinct at the same time yeah so you can like quickly quickly move through it and he also has a lot of dialogue so that's pretty quick to move through in most books too um strongly recommend him if you like fantasy fiction Redwall series is fantastic definitely still my favorite book series I, I, I remember reading at least three Redwall books when I was younger oh that's right you but did read some. it was so long ago yeah that I don't I don't remember I remember that there was I remember there was an Abbott 
And I remember not knowing what that meant. <laughs> yep. And then figuring out what it meant. It's basically um, like a mini pope. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the head of an abbey, which is right below a cathedral. Yeah. Uh, thank you, video games, for teaching me that. I never really thought about it that way. That's just from. I just think of an abbey as being like, like a, like a religious, like a slightly religious, like commune. Mm-hmm. Like a little, like a little miniature castle town. I think in in like in medieval times, it would have been yeah, it would have almost been like a monastery where there's like, like, a, like, there's a like infected people there. Yeah, yeah, it's not just the the church. But like, yeah, not just like clergymen, but also like common or common people who are yeah. part of some belief system. Yeah. Well, whatever it is, the way they describe it in them books sounds Pretty like cool. a freaking dream life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I think the um one uh, another book series I read that kind of goes into this this uh, this kid who grows up as a monk and then enters their outside world mm-hmm. um, and kind of gets exposed to it and where like he's very uncompromising in his morals but like the outside world is just so corrupt and awful that he has to like wrestle with that but he the monastery life that he leads like sounds <clears throat> pretty freaking great yeah like I'm sure I'm sure not all monasteries were like that because no. I guess another book series I read this. There's a monastery that's just f- prison, pretty much. But at least in some, it sounds that's probably what a lot of them were like. Yeah, it sounds like in some forms that they might have been actually great. Like people all diversifying their areas of focus and, and like learning them intently, like mm-hmm. just learning for weeks on end. Yeah. and mastering gardening and like and then the, the monastery has just a impeccable garden right that's like none you, you know nowhere is, uh, is as good as that because they're just doing that every day yeah until they're so good at it it's it's like it's like martial arts kind of right where they're just constantly doing it yeah. until they're masters yeah yeah something about that the, I- the idea of like I think I think the thing that's so attractive about the idea of those like societies is because there's like there's no there's no economy like the any idea of like economy has been eliminated you know yeah where there where there's like we grow food here and there's enough food for everyone and we all eat this food and uh you know everybody has like a job that they do mm-hmm but there's no there's no like money like nobody has to like pay for anything like everything is paid for just with in kind everything's paid for with like oh well everyone helps out Mm -hmm. you know and everyone like takes care of each other and you know does what they're best at yeah and it's just like it's it's literally a description of like a perfect society yeah (laughs) At, at least in the case of redwall oh my god it's the end of the episode well uh well Next week on the show, we'll have more uh, of this, more, more of us re <laughs> re talking over Vaughn playing Fire Emblem yep. at a different time. Yes. So hopefully you're enjoying this. Hopefully this is something hopefully different working, yeah. and exciting. Feels good. Maybe it maybe it seems no different at all, and you wouldn't notice the difference. I don't know. Uh, but we'll catch you in the next one. And on, on Wednesday. Wednesday's got more new Check one. Out some new one, Bjorn. And Cuphead is on Friday. And Twitter and Instagram. That's where you can find us. We'll we'll see you in the next one, folks. And also Twitch. Yes. Hopefully we'll be back there soon someday. <laughs> <laughs>